So always be aware of the human factors issues around it. It's easy to create a digital system. It's much more difficult to manage the interface between people and systems. So they're very important throughout. I think the, there's, there's a couple of things about remaining competitive. The first thing is, particularly with regard to digitalization, is start. Maybe start small. Start with a very practical you know, legacy issue that uh, relates to your existing plant, your existing process. There's always something you can do to improve efficiency, and more often than not, will be around you know, digital application. I think that's the first thing. I think the second thing is look up. For our sector, it's to look up and get connected. So we don't do this in isolation. Our industry's biggest customer is itself. But let's start to talk to other industries who can help, other service providers who can help. There's financial support available, and of course there's, uh, there's key experts and suppliers such as Siemens. I'd say start small, uh, find an easy project, uh, make sure you make it succeed, and get your employees excited about it. Uh, excitement is going to be key uh, to getting this done. The main thing about paperless manufacturing is don't be daunted, take on the project, think about the way that you structure the project, involve all different um, stakeholders, placeholders, so the quality is an important person to involve early, but break it up into little parts or into smaller parts and think about a holistic approach that you can use which will bring benefits and in individual chance. From my perspective, an area that should be easy to access is data whether it's collecting that data in the first place or utilizing the data that you have already and turning that then into information and ultimately operational value. So while trying to deploy new systems, I would say that on our legacy systems, the important measure is to really ensure that you've got your risk assessments in place, that you've understood the risks to business continuity and that actually you've got contingency measures in place to be able to deal with those should they arise and that um, the rest of the workforce is, um, is knowledgeable about those systems as well. Well, I would say the first thing is to have clear objectives about what you're going to do. Actually put in place goals that measure those objectives and give you a result, and then follow that path, because if you do that, you'll get a result. Without the objectives, forget it. My top tip is simulation based on a digital twin. With CIMIT, survey reduces significantly the risk. A control system must start properly right away. Be very aware of your use case. Um, make sure you know the benefits and make sure you know what is in scope, but more importantly, what is out of scope so you don't get uh, a very dynamic scope creep. Perhaps at a, at, a, at a higher level to start with, I think trying to, where industry can talk as much as possible to the government, the universities or the partners, um, the higher education institutions that they work at, and really be clear about what they want. So I think a key bit is to drive that multidisciplinary training that they're getting so they have some of the digital skills as well as the core skills that they've been training in. So a chemist that understands digitization as well as you know, people who are running clinical supply chains. Um, so at, at a higher level as well, um, MMIP are also very active in this area and there's a, a strong skills strand in there. Um, and I know as well EPSRC are currently running a number of um, open bids for centres for doctoral training, so this is uh, PhD level training. Uh, there's one out now in virtual reality and there's one coming soon as well in augmented reality. So. I think people can look to collaborate with those sorts of centres and really find the centres of excellence um, that they need to get those skills. My top tip to any CEO uh, around digitalisation is not to embrace it to drive productivity and competitive edge. And it needs to be done in such a way that you've got a platform in place that you can drive year on year productivity improvement so you've got a sustainable business moving forward.